Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. And fail you won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Yeah, fail you won't define me, cause that's what my father does.
Well, welcome home, church. Welcome home, Pastor. Thank you. It is good to be home together. It is good to be in the midst of God's people. You know, we need this time together, don't we? We need this time to refuel, to refill, and to encourage one another. And we need this time because this has been a busy week. And, um, you know, we just applauded for, you know, how God used Andrea through singing. But um, God's used her in mighty ways this past week, too, just through um, her organization of um, putting together this mobile pack uh, for Feed My Starving Children. And she has just blessed this place. God has used her in mighty and incredible ways. And so we just say thank you for all that you've done. But today isn't just Feed My Starving Children Day. It is Feed My Starving Children Day, but it's also Father's Day. That's right. And we're so excited to recognize and to honor uh, those men in our lives who um, are our mentors, our dads, our friends, our people who have uh, spiritually poured into our lives. And so we thank God for them today. Hey, I would invite you to stand uh, as we begin our time in worship. And I'm going to invite you to turn around and see your neighbors and wave at each other this morning because we don't get to do that very often. <laughs> it's always good to see who's here in God's house. And being here together allows us the opportunity for God to work in and through us, for him to meet the needs of his people through his people. So I'm so glad you're here to interact with one another and see how God's going to work within each one of you today. Just for us to remember how very loved we are. So let's pray. Father God, just thank you for being the ultimate example of fatherly love to us. Just pouring out your love on us through your 
addictions Come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting God so loved the world Amen Amen
Well, almighty and everlasting God, we believe that you are who you say you are. You are the first and the last, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. You are the one who has gone before us and you've been faithful through all these years. And Lord, we trust and we pray that you would be faithful for the next 2,000 years. Lord, we know that you are the, the God of all comfort and wisdom. And so we lift up those in our family who are suffering loss. We lift up the family and friends of Lois Horn as they mourn her loss, as well as the family and friends of Arnold Schultz as they mourn his loss. And Almighty God, we lift up the family and friends of Ron Gazda as they mourn his loss. Lord, there's a lot of loss and we pray that you would bring comfort and hope, that you would bring certainty, that just as you ran out of that grave, that we too one day will be called out of the grave, that there will be new life and that in you there is resurrection power. And so Lord, we pray that you would share that hope of resurrection power with your people as they mourn. And Almighty God, there are many people in our city who are mourning because they don't know you. And Lord, we pray that you might show them your love and your grace and your mercy. That you might show them who you are and who you've made them to be. And Lord, we do lift up our community Lord, we know that you aren't finished here. There's still hurt. There's still frustration. There's still division. There's still conflict in this place. And Lord, we pray that you as the Prince of Peace would bring your peace into this town, into this city, into this, well, into this country. Be the Prince of Peace. And Lord, if it's your will, we pray that you might use us to be a, a conduit of your love and your peace in this place. Jesus, we lift up those in our midst who are hurting. We lift up James Allen and Michelle Carmichael. We pray for Lincoln Candidate and for Reese Hall and Rebecca and Gary Tricky and John Cokey. We pray that you would bring your loving hand of healing into their lives, that they might know you are God and they might be able to display your miraculous work. And Almighty God, we thank you for all that you've done in this place. We thank you for the 46th wedding anniversary of Mike and Marcia Greenwell. And for the 64 years of Dean and Joan Gerhardt, we praise you for the work that you are doing in their lives. And we pray that you would continue to work in their lives. And Almighty God, we lift up the dads and the, the mentors, the teachers, the spiritual supporters in our midst, and we thank you for them, and we pray that you would bless them and honor them, that you would, that you would help us to honor them, that you would use us to, to comfort and, and to... Show them how much they are appreciated. Lord, work in them and continue to strengthen them, uphold them so that they might continue to be a beacon of your hope and of your love to the people around them. Lord, we pray all of these things knowing that you are good. We are bold to pray the prayer that you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome home, church. Big or small, you are a God-loving, home-building, world-changing follower of Jesus every day, and each one of you are important to His mission. 
as we continue to learn about building up our homes and families on the foundations of Christ, we take a few moments in our worship to learn how we can put His mission in action. Once again, we've been able to witness many of you and others in our community as God-loving, home-building world changers these past few days as you came together to serve through the Feed My Starving Children Decatur Community Mobile Pack. What a blessing it was to be one of the first Mobile Pack events to return, to see people serving together in such a big way once again, and to be part of the training up of the newest members of the FMSC Mobile Pack team along with their leadership. Decatur, you are making a big difference for children around the world, providing a hope and a future through the almost 2 million mana pack meals packed here over the past 10 years. We are additionally thankful for the over $45,000 raised to pack and provide meals this year through many individual donations and the ADM Cares Grant. We'll keep working to feed God's kids in our community until all are fed. Please continue to pray for Feed My Starving Children and for their global partners for safe delivery of the meals we packed to the places that need them the most. Recently, many of you took the time to take a first step to learn more about the ministry of safe families and began thinking through how you would put out the welcome mat of your lives to make a difference to help strengthen other families in our community. Our Safe Families leaders are excited to be able to offer in-person training sessions here at SPL in the month of July, but want to remind you that the applications for host family, family friend, family coach, and resource friend need to be submitted by June 23rd. For all the application links and information, head to latest news on spldecator.org or connect with Marla Galka and Ariana Shelton. Finally, if you missed your chance to tune in to Lunchtime Live this past Wednesday with our special guest, Pastor Rob Goodwin, you can catch it on the replay on the videos tab of our Facebook page and learn a little more about him and his family. Then be sure to save the date for Sunday, August 8th at 2 p.m. as we welcome him to our family of faith and install him as our next senior pastor. Please continue to pray for his current church and his family in this time of transition. You can find all of the details about everything happening around SPL inside your worship guide. Find this and more at spldecatororg slash church online. Finally, we love to know that you're here with us. So if you're with us for the first time, take a moment to complete a first time guest card and return it to our welcome center for a special gift. If you already consider yourself family, complete a connect card here in person or online. And as always, let us know how we can be praying for you. Since it's Father's Day weekend, I wanted to share some of my favorite dad jokes. If you know the answer, feel free to say it out loud. What's brown and sticky? A stick! How does a penguin build his house? It glues it together. What do you call a toothless bear? A gummy bear. Whether or not you love their jokes, dads are an amazing gift from God. My dad did a good job of making me feel loved and important. But even when our dads mess up or they aren't here with us, we can celebrate because God is the best dad ever. He is our heavenly father and we can thank him for the men in our lives who show us a glimpse of Jesus's love. On Father's Day, we celebrate the special people that God has given us, like dads, grandpas, uncles, cousins, birth fathers, foster dads, coaches, teachers, mentors, and more who love us like Jesus. Whoever the dad figure is for you, you can celebrate the gift of their life today. He always has fun things with me. He takes me to Target. Funny. Daddy lets us watch TV. He's super duper funny. Me, my family went camping. That was a really good memory. That's a really fun memory. He takes us fishing. Helping me get the coat on. Helping me get dressed. And he's funny. He's smart. He helps me clean my room. He helps me take care of my cat and dog. He's kind and he, I love him. He just, he understands me. A good fisherman. And I love him. 
We can go to the park and have a lot of bike rides together. He takes me to baseball practice and he's my coach. He's healthy. Dangerous daddy. He helps me cuddle up. He helps me put me to bed. He, he always wants to play catch with me. He's a great cook. He plays with me. If you want to hear a story about a dad in the Bible, check out page 272 in the Jesus Storybook Bible. See ya! That's awesome. I love hearing from those kids, their love for their dads. Uh, dads, thank you for all that you do. I did also want to take a moment here to model my beautiful hairnet. I know you're thinking, Pastor Mark, you look good in that hairnet. And you all look good in those hairnets too, especially when we're serving together with Feed My Starving Children. It has been a blessing for us to be able to engage in this, to be a part of this ministry again. And I just wanted to share with you uh, the impact that we were able to make over these last few days. Uh, things were a little different because we're still just coming out of COVID. And so their, their policies for Feed My Starving Children are a little different. We had smaller groups. So over these last three days, we were able to physically pack here uh, with the people from our community over 77,000 meals. And yes, that's a praise God. However, with the financial support and generosity of you all and people throughout our community, we were able to provide for financially over 200,000 meals. And let me, let me bring that into perspective for you. What that means, that number of 200,000 meals, is that we have provided uh, for 551 kids meals for an entire year that would otherwise not have that. That's changing the lives of kids as we partner with God. And the beautiful thing about Feed My Starving Children is you're not just feeding them physically, but that is combined with the gospel to impact their lives spiritually, that they might experience the love of God. So thank you for your generosity, for your support, uh, both of time and money to support that ministry, to partner with us in that, and across all of our ministries. Uh, if you would like to continue to be a part of that and invest in the ministry here at St. Paul's, uh, and you don't know how to do that already, you can give online, uh, both clicking on the give button if you're joining us online right now or at another time on our face or on our website. If you're here, you can put it in the big white box out there. That's also where you put your connect cards. Uh, there's cards in the pews in front of you, uh, both for members and guests. If you would fill one of those out, we'd love to know that you're here with us. You can drop that off in the big box out there. If you're a first time guest with us, uh, you can fill out one of the first time guest cards, take it to our welcome center. We have a special gift for you to thank you for being here in worship with us. So thank you all. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you and praise you for you are a faithful and loving father. You are the perfect image of what a father should be. And we thank you for your faithfulness, for your commitment to us, for your mercy and grace and love that are new every day, continuing on for us and for the promise of everlasting life you have given us. Help us, Lord, to live out what a, uh, a life that reflects you and your love. Uh, and Lord, today, meet us. Help us to hear what it is we need to hear that we might more fully live out who we are as your beloved children. Thank you, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are going to be finishing up, wrapping up our home makeover series here today. We've been in this for about six weeks now, traveling through, talking about what does it look like? What are some of the principles about building a home, a family, those relationships closest to us on uh, the principles of God and in a God honoring way that it might flourish, all who are part of that might flourish uh, what does it look to build our homes and our lives on the foundation of Jesus and his grace and mercy for us? And I, I pray that no matter what stage you are at in life, would, no matter what your family looks like, that you have been blessed by our journey through this series. And as we finish up today, as it is Father's Day weekend, I am going to be speaking directly to you dads here today. However, I want to make a note. That doesn't mean that those of you who aren't fathers can just tune out and take a nap, okay?
Okay, I better not see any nodding off because the person uh, who most fully understood and lived out the principles that we are going to be talking about today was never a biological father. However, he most fully lived those out as he poured into and developed a dozen handpicked men over a three year period and day in, day out, that they might be formed into and become the God-loving, home-building world changers that God had created and redeemed them to be. And you and I, we know this man as Jesus. Jesus was not a biological dad, but he poured into the lives of others. And I believe that each and every one of us, we are called to pour into the lives of others that God places in our lives, that they might grow and develop into the people God has created and redeemed them to be. So there is something for you here, no matter who you are today. But fathers, as I think about, and as I thought about this series and uh, what we might talk about, there's a question that came to my mind. And it's really the foundation for our message title today. And it's this question. Are you at the table? Are you at the table? And when I ask that question, I'm not just asking you, are you physically present at the dinner table? Though we think that is a very valuable thing here at St. Paul's. We believe families gathering around food, around meals together, uh, connecting, interacting, having conversations, that's an important thing. We talk about those as cementing meals. They bind families together. But really what I'm asking you is this, are you at the table of your children's lives? Are you not just physically present with them around the home, but are you there emotionally present with them, relationally present with them? Do you take time to connect with them through their favorite activities? Take time to listen, to hear about their lives and their interests. Do you intentionally take opportunities to encourage them and infirm them, to declare to them, I love you, and I'm proud of you. And I know guys, you might be thinking at this moment, okay, Pastor Mark, emotions and feelies and all that. I don't know if I'm all about that. I mean, it's not a very manly thing, but guys, don't kid yourself. You have emotions too, though you may struggle to communicate what you're feeling a little more than ladies do. And if you wanna believe that you connecting and investing in the lives of your children isn't a big deal, you're kidding yourself. This is a very valuable and important thing. So are you at the table? You know, Jesus modeled this in a magnificent way throughout his life and his ministry. He was at the table with his disciples. Not just physically, though many times we see Jesus gathering around food and a meal with his disciples, connecting with them, having conversation with them, doing life together with them, celebrating with them. But Jesus was there investing in their life in an intentional way, day in, day out, pouring in, asking them questions to to help them discover more of who God was encouraging them, showing them love and compassion, listening to them, at times calling them out when they were going astray and at times calling them up to be more fully who God created and redeemed them to be. Jesus was at the table of the lives of his disciples day in and day out. He knew he was committed to it each and every day because he knew through doing that, they would grow to be the God-loving, home-building world changers that God had for them to be. He knew the power of investing in the life of another person. You know, as I thought about being at the table, I began to think about food, right? And of course, uh, if you know me, one of my favorite foods in all the world is barbecue smoked meats. 
And as I began to think about barbecue, two things came to my mind. A, first, I began to salivate and uh, really get hungry. And maybe some of you are starting to get hungry as you look at this picture as well. But the second thing that began to happen is I began to think about the process of smoking meat, of creating barbecue, this just sweet smelling, sweet tasting product in the end. And as I thought about that, and I thought about being a father and investing in the life of another person, I began to see some ways in which these things overlapped. And so today, what I'm going to be doing as I talk to you fathers and each of you is just laying out some of these principles that I have learned personally from both smoking meats and from being a father. And the hope is that you dads, you will be encouraged and supported, but you also will be uh, just invited more. You feel strengthened and invited more into what God is calling you to. As I thought about this, I also thought about this passage uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, where Paul writes this. He says, thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance, the smell of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. I love this passage, this idea, right? That we are the aroma, the smell of Jesus to others, to God, right? That we would in our lives, we are called as children of God to reflect Jesus in the ways we live, in what we do and in what we say, that we might reflect the heart of Jesus, of God, his love and grace and mercy to those that he places before us. But I also think of this as a father, that this, dads, this is the goal for you as you pour into the life of your kids, that they would grow ultimately to be the aroma of Christ, that they would grow to be children, people, men and women after God's own heart, reflecting his image, his life and his love to others. And that comes as you invest and you pour into their lives, as you reflect Christ to them, they will grow to be ones who reflect the life of Jesus. So here we go. We're gonna talk about these principles of both smoking meats and of being a father, being a parent, investing in the life of another person. The first principle is this. It's a long and slow process. It is a long and slow process. You know, smoking meats isn't a quick thing. It's not something you can decide to do on a whim. You can't just be like a steak where you say, oh, you know what? I feel like a steak. I'll turn on the grill, throw it on about 10 minutes. Ah, there it's done, right? You have to plan and prepare. It's a long investment of time and energy. Uh, The actual time of cooking the meat in the chamber takes about eight to 12 hours Uh, depending on the size of the meat. Uh, But also there's prep time. You're starting the night before cutting the fat off the meat, putting on the rub and letting it sit. It is a long and slow process. And the same is true of parenting, of being a father. It is a long and slow process. And because of that, there are going to be times when you are frustrated, where it feels like everything has stalled, you're not making any progress and you're gonna be thinking, man, is anybody hearing or getting anything that I say? I am trying to pass on to them. In this principle, it reminds us this, that both smoking meats and being a father, being a parent, investing in the life of another person, it requires commitment and patience. You have to be committed. You have to be all in from the beginning and through it out the whole time. If halfway through the smoking process, I decided, you know, I'm getting bored of this. This is hard work. And I stepped away. The meat wouldn't get finished. It wouldn't become what it's meant to be and that amazing finished product. And the same is true for you fathers. You gotta stay committed and you gotta have patience because it is frustrating. 
Uh, it's challenging. You know, Jesus models this in an amazing way throughout his life and ministry, commitment and patience. Uh, if you think about it, Jesus was traveling with his disciples for three years, right? Pouring into them day in, day out. And even after the end of that three years, he's still pouring into them because he realizes they're still not quite where they need to be. He's been patient and he's committed. We see this at the end of the gospel of John. In John chapter 21, this is after Jesus has risen from the dead. He's appeared to his disciples a few times and now some of his disciples are out fishing. And all of a sudden this person appears on shore and uh, all of a sudden, and he tells them to cast their nets out and they get this big catch of fish, this miracle catch of fish again. And of course they know who it is, it's Jesus. And so they come to shore and he's made breakfast. He's made a meal for them to gather around again. And he just shares his love, his life, and he teaches them again. And after this, he has this intimate conversation, this personal conversation with Peter. Remember Peter, who just a short time before that denied even knowing Jesus after three years of Jesus investing in his life. But Jesus didn't write him off. He was committed. And so he comes to Simon Peter after breakfast and he says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Simon Peter says to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. Jesus remained committed. He was patient and he continues to invite his disciples into what God had for them to be who God had created and redeemed them to be. And fathers, as you do that, God will bless that as you're com committed and patient. Now, there are two types of smokers out there that you can have. Uh, one of those is what I would call the set it and forget it smokers. Uh, these are ones where you pour in a bunch of pellets into a chamber, you set the temperature you want it at, you put your meat in, and uh, you might have to check on it from time to time, but for the most part, you can put it in there, set it, forget it, walk away, and go about the rest of your day getting other things accomplished. And uh, you know, if you have a set it and forget it smoker, it creates some amazing, good tasting, wonderful barbecue. Uh, I don't look down on you and your smoker. It is just as good uh, as my smoker. But here's the problem. We often try to uh, act as if we can do the same thing with parenting, where we can just set it and forget it. You know, I'll check in every once in a while, but then, you know, I'll just kind of set it off to the side. I'm not intentionally investing day in and day out. And we even try to hand off the development of our children to other people and things, you know? Oh, I send them to school. They'll take care of developing them and teaching them what they need to know. Oh, I'll just send them to children's ministry and youth ministry. They'll, they'll take care of teaching them what they need to know. Ah, oh, you know, uh, TV or whatever else. I'll just let them learn from these other things. But that's not the way God has made it to be. You parents, you fathers are meant to be the number one influencer in your kid's life, to be intentionally pouring into their lives. And so being a father, being a parent, investing in the life of someone else is more like my smoker. Uh, with my smoker, I, power, I uh, feed it with charcoal and wood and every half hour about, I am having to add charcoal to it. So. It is an all day task. I have to be committed on point the whole time. I can't uh, walk away from it and, and think that it's gonna take care of itself. Uh, because once again, if I don't stick with it, the meat's not gonna get done as it should. And so it's a constant commitment. It takes patience, it, it's all in. And the same is true of being a father, of pouring into the life of another person. And that brings us to our second point, our second principle. And that's this, 
that both smoking and being a father, investing in the life of another person, it requires constant monitoring and adjustment. Inside my smoker, I have uh, multiple different uh, temperature probes and two of them are uh, monitoring the temperature inside of the cooking chamber. And the other two I use to put into the meat like this to monitor the temperature of the meat as it's cooking. And so I have a little wireless uh, handheld part that I, I'm always looking at the temperature, you know, every few minutes to see, okay, is the temperature getting too hot? If it gets too hot, well, the, the meat's going to be too tough. It's going to get overdone. So I can't let it get too hot. And well, if the the temperature gets too low, well, the cooking of the meat's going to stall and it's not going to get done as it should. And so I have to constantly be monitoring and based on what's happening, adjusting, adding more charcoal or not adding any more and finding ways to reduce the temperature. It's a constant monitoring. And as I see things change, I make a change. And there's been times because uh, in order to get... uh, barbecue done at a time when you would actually reasonably want to eat, you got to start the process early in the morning. And there's been times after adding some charcoal, I've gone inside and I've sat down and I've fallen asleep actually. And uh, I wake up all of a sudden in a panic and I go and look at the thermometer and the temperatures dropped way down. And you know, the cooking of the meat, the development of it to its finished product stalls when that happens. And the same is true, dads. If you fall asleep in monitoring and being aware of what's going on in your kids' lives, their development's gonna stall. And so this reminds us that we need to be aware. We need to be constantly uh, vigilant, checking in with our kids and our families, our relationships. And as we see different things happening and uh, making adjustments to meet the needs that we see It makes me think of this question that we need to consider. How are you taking stock of your family and your relationships? You know, for me, in those times when I am aware uh, and I'm paying attention, I can tell by my kids' behavior, by my boys' behavior, if I've been spending too much time away from home because they'll begin to try to find every way that they can, any way that they can to get my attention. And Uh, usually it's not a good way. Uh, And that can be frustrating for me and I could just get angry, but if I'm aware, I can notice that. And instead I can make an adjustment and say, you know what? I really need to make some time to intentionally connect with them, to do something fun with them, uh, to pour into their lives. And it's amazing to see the transition, the transformation that happens for them when I make time to do that. So you got to be constantly monitoring and adjusting. And the last principle is this, that both with smoking and with being a father, investing in the life of another person, it's more of an art than a science. Yes, there are some tips and tricks that can be helpful in uh, the process of smoking meats. There's good things to know that can help you get to a successful uh, product in the end. It's good to know that a pork butt, uh, which you make pulled pork from, uh, finishes at about 195 to 203. And so when the internal temperature of that meat is at that point, then it'll pull apart good. It'll be nice and tender, uh, knowing that end goal, right? But the process in between is completely different each and every time dependent on the weather, the size of the cut of meat, the makeup of the cut of meat, the process is different. And so you just have to be able to be flexible based on the circumstances. And the same is true in being a father and being a parent in pouring into the life of other people because each and every person has been created uniquely by our God. And so uh, how you parent one child and what works with one child isn't gonna work with the other child, it's going to be different. And you have to be flexible and adjust. And you know, this principle also reminds us that, Hey, you're not always going to get it right. It's not just knowing the right things to do that are going to make you, Oh, if I just know it all, then I'm going to get it right. No, 
You're not gonna get it right sometimes and that's all right. But it does matter what you do when you don't get it right, how you respond. Uh, You know, if you're all right with just being bad at the art of being a father, that's not all right. But if you're seeking to grow in that, to get better at that, that is a good and good, uh, a good thing. It's something our God calls holy. You know, as I think about this, it reminds me of uh, when we first moved here uh, in that transition. <clears throat> uh, actually, I'll go back a little bit further. Uh, coming into uh, being married and thinking about having kids, I thought, you know, I think I'll be pretty good as a father. I've been an uncle for quite a while. I've learned a lot from that. I I think I got this pretty well figured out. Um, Soon after becoming a father, I realized I didn't have it all figured out. Uh, But one of the places where I missed the mark is when we moved here. Uh, Ezra was, excuse me, Ezra was about two years old and there's a lot of transitions. So we moved to a new place, a new house. He had a new brother. Uh, For us, me and Jen, it was a lot of transitions and I missed uh, how hard of a transition that was for Ezra to move to a new place. And some of the behaviors that he was having uh, displaying that were just frustrating to me, uh, I was missing that those were because uh, he was struggling with this move and this transition. I was too focused on work and what I was trying to learn here in this new transition. And as I think about that, uh, at times I wonder how much of his struggles with anxiety and especially in new situations comes from the challenges and how hard that transition was for him. As I think about that, as I reflect on that, it's easy to be met by guilt and shame and seeing that I missed the mark and how that might negatively be impacting his life even here and now. And it's in that moment that I am so thankful for the mercy and grace of our God. Because I know that when I don't get it right, he forgives me, he renews me, he covers over my mistakes and my sins, my mess ups. That I know because of the mercy and grace of God, he can take even my mistakes and mess ups and make good out of them because he has done again and again throughout history with his people. I know that because of the mercy and grace of God, that each and every day, today and tomorrow and the next day after that is a new opportunity for me to invest in the lives of my boys. And that's a great and wonderful thing. That's a beautiful thing. And fathers, if there's some of them out there who you know and you are battling with the mistakes you have made, I want you to know that the mercy and grace of our God is for you too. That those things can be true for you. That it covers over the mistakes you've made and that today and every day you have left is a new opportunity to pour into and invest in the lives of your kids in an intentional way. I'm reminded of Colossians chapter three, which Pastor Ray had us look at a few weeks back because this passage reminds us in a powerful way, the abundance of grace and mercy and compassion and love that our God has shown to us and how he calls us as his beloved children then to show that to others. So let's take a moment to just reflect upon this, to rest in being reminded of what our God has done for us and what he calls us to. Paul writes, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and loved, put on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As you have been forgiven, so you also must forgive. And above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Dads, I get it. I've experienced it. I know the challenges 
of being a father. It is a long and slow process and times it feels grueling. It feels like you're not making any progress. And yes, it requires constant monitoring and adjustment and that can be exhausting at times. And it is more of an art than a science and you're not always gonna get it right. But I gotta tell you, it is so worthwhile. Fathers, there are a lot of things that this world tells you you should chase after to be successful, to be worthwhile. Maybe it's that promotion, that position, money, a boat, a car, a house. But I have to tell you, all of those pale in comparison to the worth of investing intentionally in the lives of your kids. You will not regret doing that with your life. And not just fathers, each and every one of you, no matter who you are, I truly believe that one of the most worthwhile things you can do with your life is to intentionally invest in the life of another person to help them grow and develop into the person God has created them to be, to be that sweet smelling life-giving masterpiece that our God has created and redeemed them to be, that they might be the aroma of Christ to God and to others. Fathers, today I wanna say thank you for the ways that you are already doing this or have done this. And as a way to say thank you to you, uh, we have a special gift for you after the service. If you remember back uh, about a month and a half ago, I told you, sorry guys, the chocolate's not for you, but your days are coming. This is this day. And uh, so for you today, for the men uh, here today, uh, to say thank you and to celebrate fathers, we have for you some smoked with love pulled pork. Partially it's because I wanted to be known as your favorite pastor versus Pastor Bill, but it's also to celebrate you guys as well. Uh, so <laughs> after service, to, you have to look forward to out here in our fellowship area, go grab a cup of pulled pork, enjoy. I recommend the mustard barbecue sauce, the yellow sauce, but uh, if you use the red sauce, uh, I won't hold that against you. Uh, but enjoy. Thank you for what you are doing and continue to pour in to the lives of your kids. And here's your nudge for this week for all of you. We've been calling you up to some, a lot of different things throughout this series. And so this week, I want you to take some time to read through and just spend some time in Ephesians chapter two, because it lays out in a powerful way uh, the mercy and grace and compassion of our God for us and what he's accomplished for us in Jesus. And I want you to rest in that, to soak that in, to just reflect on that truth and to take, let that sink down into your heart that you might know that you are forgiven, redeemed and loved by our God. And then as God gives you opportunities this week, just share that same mercy and grace with someone else. Amen? Hey, let's stand. Let's come before our God uh, ready to receive his mercy and grace as we declare to him, Lord, we haven't got it right. We desperately need your forgiveness and mercy. So we pray. Father, I plead guilty before you of all my sins. I have lived as if you did not matter and as if I mattered most. I have not let your love have its way with me. And so my love for others has failed. There are those I have hurt and those I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. Lord Jesus Christ, 
son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And our God does. He has abundant mercy and grace for you, abundant life for you. Because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and his glorious resurrection, I can declare to you here today that you are forgiven and set free in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And in confidence, knowing that our God has forgiven us and made us his own, receive this blessing from our God. May our Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his unending favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let's sing about the faithfulness of our God. Is an open door 
So come now, Lord, like never before. Amen. Amen. Church, thank you for worshiping alongside of us uh, today. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. And go get your smoked meat right out there. Yum. Your prayer.